I would say Rodney Mullen for sure. Just for what he brought me into the industry and what he's given to skateboarding. Christian Asoy, just the way he f he flew. I was like, how is this? You know, and who made biker shorts look even cooler than they ever could? You know, I was like, I even had a set, but I would wear them under my Jimmy Z's. Like, whoo! Tommy Guerrero. I was pretty pumped on Tommy Guerrero from those PAL videos. He just, the way he skated the streets and Steve Caballero and then not his coppice. I think everybody during that era, once they seen Nottis spin on that hydrant, they were like, they were like mesmerized, like going to their first first magic show, you know? And it was like, oh my God. Those those were the five, I think, for me. For me, I have to say Rodney. Because he, he started from the beginning where I was like, how can, is this stuff possible? And then for me getting to know him and him bringing me into the industry and standing strong and, and believing in me, you know? Because at this point, who knows? You guys might be here just doing your own thing and I'd be you'd see me grinding across this thing with my Z-Roller still. I don't know. I don't know what I was known for. I can say that maybe I influenced people to stay motivated and know that they can do it for a while because I've been doing this now for, I've been professional for I think 20 years, you know? And I think I can motivate people in the new generation that is insane at skateboarding to go, hey, if you pace yourself and have fun with it, you can maintain and have a long career like I have. Because there's, there's people I've already seen come in and out within two, three years, careers. And that just trips me out, you know? And then there's long careers, 10 years. And I'm just like, but that's still not long, you know? In skateboarding, I, you know, I've fairly always been like a technical skateboarder, and that's what people knew me for. And there was a time where people would only think I skated picnic tables, which was a, an era in my life which was hilarious. Like, I would go to demos in Australia, and they would give everybody names, and they would call me the picnic table assassin. And it was at, at a point it got annoying. I was like, oh, God. And they even specifically brought picnic tables to every demo for me. You know, and I was like, Jesus Christ! Like, I remember getting a response from a lot of people, and people still to this day come up to me that stop skateboarding. It's like, hey, those picnic table days, loved them. After the whole technical aspect of like how I was so technical, um, people never realized that I love skating tranny so much. It was something I grew up on, and I think people in my generation, it was like mandatory. One influence to me now is staying true to skateboarding, like um, seeing all the photographers who have been in it forever, seeing the skateboarders who, from my generation, who are still pushing it, that influences me. Seeing the new generation that's insane pushing it even more, because one thing that sucks about skateboarding is you don't want it to regress. You always want it to progress. It sucks that it progresses so fast, but at the same time, it helps, it helps you progress, you know? Just go and have fun. If you're having fun doing it, just do it, and that's the thing is I still have fun skateboarding, and I still dream. It's funny, I still have dreams that I landed something in my dream and I wake up and I feel as though I found the secret out to that trick and I go and try it and then the, the dream didn't help. I just want to keep progressing and I want to be able to still do things that I've never done and still get a response from people that I skate with and go, hey, I can't believe that you even, you know, I've never seen that trick, yeah. you know, and you're just like, wow, like, I'm still able to do a trick that hasn't been done. Yeah. And that's, it's pretty rare.